Uh, the strike's obviously affecting, first and foremost, the writers, as the writer's skills on strike, the actors, because the actors are on strike. We've talked in recent um, days about the fact that, you know, auxiliary industries are being hurt as well, because, you know, without production going on, other people are out of their jobs as well and stuff like that. Well, now we're even seeing it starting to impact and hurt the production companies. Now, I'm not talking about the major studios. I'm talking about individual smaller production companies, the ones that have like overall deals with studios that are now getting canned. According to a report coming out, Warner Brothers has just suspended the overall deals with people like J.J. Abrams, Greg Berlanti, Mindy Kaling, Bill Lawrence, all these big major producers and creators of content that have overall production deals that even while the strikes were going on, the WB was still paying them so they could pay all their staff, their creative staff, their administrative staff, all that kind of stuff. They could still be there working. But Warner Brothers has pulled the plug on that. Um, now, according to Variety, this is what they said about this. But production has been almost completely shut down since the SAG-ACTRA joined the WGA members on the picket line in July. Once talent is no longer able to render services, the policy in general is to suspend deals. Such a deal suspension is different from overall terminations, which so far have not been widely seen in the industry, even though, this is interesting, the writer strike has already passed the 90-day mark when historically deal makers have the option to kill agreements in the face of an quote unquote act of God, the common show business interpretation for how the phrase force majeure applies to the type of labor shutdowns. Basically, when you get a guy like say Bill Lawrence, right? The guy who created shows like Scrubs and Ted Lasso, right? Like all time greats and, and many Cougartown. Cougar Town. Oh, he's so like great. Lots of these great shows, Bill Lawrence, right? He's got this overall deal. So even though the strikes are going on, like he's still developing right? And him and his entire company are still developing and people are getting paid working in those companies that are still, you know, meeting the requirements of their overall deal. Well, there is a clause in all those deals of a force majeure, which basically says something like this, that it's outside of everybody's control, even though it is somewhat in your control, but you know, this, the strikes are going on. That is part of the thing that's included after 90 days, they have the right to just up and kill the deals and say, these deals are done. These deals are over. Now, the other option they have <laughs> is to suspend the deals. And what that would essentially mean is once the strikes are over, the deals can then resume. However, the big problem is for the 7,500, 300 people who work at all these individual companies and development stages, they're all gonna be without getting a paycheck between now and whenever the deals get resumed. So this is gonna hurt them also. The talk around the industry right now, so this is this is not a fact that can be confirmed. I want to be very, very clear about that. But the talk that's going around is that right now what Warner Brothers is doing is suspending the deals, but behind the scenes, they're looking to restructure these deals. And they're going to use this as an opportunity to go to the companies and say, look, we have the right to kill the deals, but we'd rather not. I mean, we like working with you, but we believe the terms that you have, which in some of these situations were terms that were made by the previous ownership of Warner Brothers that the current ownership doesn't like the new, the deals that were there, may want to go and say, we want to change the terms of the deal. And it may behoove somebody like a J.J. Abrams or a Greg Berlanti or a Mindy Kaling to go, yeah, that's still better than what I'll get elsewhere, so yeah, we'll take it. Or they could say no and they'll just keep the deal, or they could say no and they could part ways and Warner Brothers will kill the deal. But for now, the main thing is, their water line, their finances have been cut off uh, at this point, which I, I, again, I get it. If the industry isn't in development, the industry's not working, you know, the parties involved should have the opportunity to say, we need to suspend our the terms of our agreement right now because the industry is not functioning at the moment. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, DraftKings. Can you believe we've had seven months without an NFL game? Crazy, right? Well, good thing that's over. NFL is here and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you just bet five bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. 
check the app to see what you get. So download now and use the code CAMPIA to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code CAMPIA only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Anyway, Chris... Uh, you know, we didn't point it out earlier uh, for, for anybody who's relatively new to the show, but you are a member of SAG. Uh, you've actually been on their nomination committee before. Yeah, which was so fun. Um, this obviously is not a SAG actor specific deal, but it is something you still have a little bit of vested interest in. Um, surprised to see this happen. Surprised it didn't happen a little bit earlier, like when the 90 day mark hit. Do you think we're going to see other studios also like step in with their first look deal companies that they have and maybe suspending these? I, I don't know. What do you think about this? I am surprised it didn't happen a little sooner because of how the studios have been in cost cutting mode and really just trying to hang on to what they can. But I think they did think this last time they all met up, everything was going to be fine with that. Well, here's the deal. So just accept it. And clearly that's not how things went out. So it doesn't surprise me that they're suspending these. It just surprised me that it took this long to do it. Mm. I want to note too, I mean, we've we've surpassed the original, well, not original, but the last writer strike, the 2007 one, ended on its 100-day mark. Right. We're and now in like what? 100 and we're almost a day 130. I think today is day 129. No, really? I believe so. For writers? Wow. For writers, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Actors were now into the 50s, um, which is longer than I thought for that too. Well, so remember when the deadline was coming up and then the AMPTP and friend Drescher of SAG said, you know what? We've been meeting. We're going to extend the deadline by a week. To which naive morons like me went, well, they must be close to a deal. <laughs> if, if the AMPTP and SAG are saying, you know what? We're talking right now. We're just going to, we're going to give ourselves another week. I thought, awesome. They must be close to a deal. I remember I even said, you know what? I bet the strike's not going to, I bet they're going to be able to avoid this strike. Yep. Woo! Two months later, <laughs> that did not age well. No. I don't think any of us saw it coming of this lasting this long. Yeah. And, you know, obviously because of my position in the union, I do have a vested interest and I also have a, a different perspective on the AMPTP of just, guys, this is costing you so much more money than the initial negotiation offers. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out right now. I do think it behooves WB to be able to suspend them so they can change the terms of their deal potentially to recoup costs later on. Mm, Maybe we offer some of these point. folks less money moving on. I don't know if that means they'll stay with WB or they'll just accept their terms because they're so eager to get back to work. And that is always one of the issues when it comes to the entertainment industry or any industry that's got fans, right? We all love working. And there was a part, a part of us at a point in time that would go, I'll pay you to let me do this job. I just want to go make films and I want to mm. do this and I want to do that. And I know around my community, at least, some actors are starting to already wear thin of just, I got to do something. I got to do something again. And that's when things can get really dangerous of either people accepting really low ball offers or crossing that picket line. So this is why it is so important that everybody just sits down and figures it out so everyone can make a living wage. And also so we avoid more layoffs because that's something else that's going to be happening. If we see this happening at Warner Brothers with suspended deals. That's shows being cut. That's people losing their jobs. And it's already been rumored that we're going to see that at NBC Universal in the next coming weeks as well. All right. Well, just hope everybody can sit down at a table, order some nachos, and come to some kind of an agreement here soon. That's what's been missing from the negotiations nachos. is nachos. You Honestly, can't be in a bad mood when there's nachos on the you table. You can't. You can't be angry eating a nacho. That'd and a bowl of ice cream. Oh. You know what doesn't eat nachos? AI. Get AI. AI. That's right. Get AI. They can't eat a no nacho AI with you. at the, the negotiating table. <laughs> um, hey, we'll, we'll see how this all kind of continues to play out. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy show podcast available on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today. So it'll be there when you need it.